is uh, with your family, Nancy, Sorrel, are you going to come up here and uh, present the Road of the Year Award? about the paradoxes of rowing. He states that the greatest paradox of the sport has to do with the psychological makeup of the people who pull the oars. And I quote, great oarsmen and oarswomen are necessarily made of conflicting stuff, of oil and water, of fire and earth. On the one hand, they must possess enormous self-confidence, strong egos, and titanic willpower. They must also be immune to frustration. Nobody who does not believe deeply in himself or herself and his or her ability to endure hardship and prevail over adversity is likely even to attempt something as audacious as competitive rowing at its highest levels. Thank you. <laughs> the sport offers as many opportunities for suffering and so few opportunities for glory that only the most tenaciously self-reliant and self-monitored are likely to succeed at it. And yet at the same time, and this is the key, he says, no other sport demands and rewards the complete abandonment of self that rowing does. For even rowing in a single or in a boat with multiple rowers, the team effort or the single effort, the perfectly synchronized flow of muscle, oars, boat, and water, the single, whole, unified, and beautiful symphony that a boat becomes is all that matters, not the individual, not the self. There is a rower here who sits amongst us who possesses this paradox, the tremendous discipline to compete while at the same time abandonment of the self to the sport and to the rowing club. This particular rower Please be patient, as I may not announce her name quite yet, because if I did, she might not let me finish. This particular rower of the year accomplished the task of coming in first place at the premier rowing event ahead of the Charles in the category of Women's Veteran Singles. Out of 25 women, but if you count the whole category, 52 women. A win at the Charles proves the victor to be the best and fastest sculler in North America, as the best rowers in this country and even from Europe and beyond are qualified to row in this event. An honor based on her ranking from her finish in the previous year, this rower started in position as bow number one, which means that the rowers are each started individually, each one of 52 at 10 second intervals. And the task of the first rower, in this case, our rower, was to hold off all 52 women of them, 52 of them, during this intensely challenging three mile course with the twists and turns that demands both physical and mental preparation to maneuver. This means that as she sees a boat coming, she must spend them off and row harder while at the same time never truly knowing if she won until the finish line based on the fact that the boat ranked lower could have gained time that she was unaware of. And yet this rower kept her paradox needed to compete at this level. She picked up the pace, powered through with her legs, and depleted herself not only to win in the time of 22 minutes and 9 seconds, but to also beat the course record. Yeah. that the lead that she had over second place was 30 seconds, which amounts to an excess 
in a boat of at least a thousand meters. He states that having a lead longer than a football field in rowing is extraordinary. Extraordinary. Yeah. 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 No, 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 I'm, I, I took my time to write this. You guys are like, hey, <laughs> Rachel Perry, one of this rower's training partners, says of her, she states, I have been trying, training with her for a number of years now. To win as many regattas as her throughout her career, it involves dedication to fitness, rowing technique, and a willingness to get up every day at the crack of dawn to execute a training program. It becomes a second job and an obsession. And here is another paradox, that her, despite her intensity, as Rachel says, and training regimen, that this rower makes time to introduce new and novice rowers always to Lake Merced in the Bay. There is no doubt that many of us in this room can say that this particular rower has made us a better athlete a better rower and even a better swimmer because of her knowledge and generosity of time. As Elizabeth Glass, who's in the bar, points out, of course. in her desire to be a better swimmer, she was told by this rower swimmer to glide in the pool just like she does in rowing. And when Elizabeth wanted to improve her rowing stroke, she was told by this rower swimmer to glide in the boat just like she does in the pool. In her 25 years as a member of South End Rowing Club, she has served as race director for our famous and infamous Bridge to Bridge Regatta, created the Honorable Norm Peterson Regatta, and has taken to the task of herding cats and yearly mobilizes us to compete in the club triathlon. Some of us affectionately calling her tactics for, tactics for this the shell game. I don't know if you know that. And there are a few of us in this room who have the honor of rowing with her in a double. Although, and here comes the paradox again, that she can yell at us and even make us cry. <laughs> rowing with her, you are guaranteed to walk away from the boat knowing that somehow she was able to coach out, co coach out of you the hardest row that you ever rowed that you didn't even know existed inside of you, but somehow she knew, and knew the exact magical words to say to inspire you to do your absolute best. There is no other feeling of that level of accomplishment walking away from the boat, knowing that about yourself, and this rower inspires that in others, giving her the nickname Coach D. Coach. to name the South End Rowing Club's recipient of the 2016 Rower of the Year. My final point this evening is that our club itself is a paradox. We are full of rock-solid athletes pushing our limits and pushing the limits of our respective sports. And yet at our core is the warmest, most generous, and kindest community and the amazing Diane Davis is the rower at the center of our club who fits that paradox perfectly, making our club what it is today and proving to be our rower. rower of the Nancy really took her time, but this morning, this morning, like we usually do almost every Saturday morning, we always paddle down to wherever our destination was. Today was just shy of the um, Golden Gate Bridge. We spin it, and then we kind of handicap it that we all take off, and it took everything I had to get this woman, and then once I caught her, I couldn't get past her, so she was rowing her butt off. And it was a great row. So Saturday morning rows with us are just one of those mornings that we give it at our all, whether or not we're in our singles and our doubles. And um, I really appreciate Nancy. Thank you very much. And I want to say just real quick, um, the, the group next door, uh, the triathlon, uh, we have a little bit of a problem here. And we've got some great rowers coming up. In a, in, and we are going to come around. And it will be our turn again with this crowd next door. So I mean, right? 
Hey, Jim Silla, I think we ought to get that freaking handball guys and make that one of our, because we have handball players. They don't have handball players. Let's not try to bring that in. What do you say, you guys? One more thing, Virginia, uh, I don't think Virginia's here tonight, but she was our rowing commissioner. Novice rower, but an excellent communication person, and she really did her best bringing us all together this year, and I want to thank her and amongst all of our rowers that um, partake in the part in the triathlon, bridge to bridge regatta, and um, thank you very much. Let's have a great evening and good good steal. Thank you, man.